Your daily ping today, Friday, November 3rd. Welcome to another episode, all you early risers. And this episode, we will talk about the ping page overview as usual. Explain today what is a blockchain. We will talk a little bit about blockchains. Prompting for beginners, we are pointing the attention to one of our first series, <coughs> second uh, course, where we explain all about prompting. And we'll get into the details in just a minute. We will talk or we will give you one of our own GPT work desk program tips. The state of the Bitcoin, we will quickly mention something about it. And then we will complete it with what is proof of work, just very briefly, so it's a term that you've heard about. So let's go back here, ping page overview. Let's take a look. What do we have on our ping page today? And I'll pull in our own GPT work desk, and we have two entries that I thought we were that were interesting for covering today. So here is our AI course prompting for beginners that is free for our or included for our members. And there's a free series on YouTube, which is truncated so you can see a little bit of the beginning. And I thought it would be interesting to show a little bit about what AI can do to generate in because we're talking about generative AI. And so far, our focus has been on generating documents, text, questions and answers and all that. But there are also something called mid journey. And it generates images and it is pretty good. So just for a quick second, I wanted to showcase what it can do. Let's get a little bit of uh, higher quality here. And let's do this full screen, which is not working. So, well, this is as full as it gets. So these are AI generated images. And they are generated by a prompt. So we have seen what prompts are. So prompt is a text input that you use to communicate to the AI model. And in this case, we were asking questions and we get answers back, but you can also use it to generate images. So here you see on the bottom, you see, yeah, you can see it. You see the text prompt that was used to generate the image. And the same can be done for generating audio, generating video, Audio, and audio is pretty good, video is still um, in its early stages, everything is in its early stages, but even so, it is pretty, look at this, how, how photorealistic this can be. We will use AI generated images in our marketing materials, we will use it in our documentation, we will use it for writing ebooks and lead magnets, all of that will be demonstrated and in our courses uh, live. So you can repeat it, you can find out for yourself what you want to use it for. Again, it doesn't really completely replace your web designer yet, but it sure, sure can create a lot of good ideas and brainstorming internally before you engage your professional designer. So that's pretty amazing. We will come back to this later. We will do this every now and then just to remind ourselves that there is a lot, a lot of good stuff out there. And then again, how do we use it in our company and in our daily lives? And that's exactly what we showcase in this series. So that's it for that. And we will close this and then Let's see what we have here on our agenda next. So what is a blockchain? So we showed in our previous daily ping the blockchain of Zillion Coin and Zillion Grid because the coins are at this point at little value. So we can send these back and forth just like we did early in the Bitcoin era. And that is true. Since the Bitcoin is over $30,000 now, it's a little expensive to use it for demonstrations and send you a couple of coins just to demonstrate how it works. So a blockchain is a technology that is the underlying technology for mostly 
actually all digital coins and then specifically we will focus on what's called proof of work. There are many, many proof of XYZ out there. The, <clears throat> the second biggest one is proof of stake where the token value in your wallet is used to secure the chain. In this case, proof of work, you will actually have to create a solution to a cryptographic problem that requires CPU power and thus electricity. And that is how the blockchain is established and secured. But basically a blockchain is a sequence of blocks that are released on a time interval. Remember, all of this is software. So you're looking at software. Digital currencies are software. And it is released, blocks, new blocks are released on with Bitcoin, it's every 10 minutes. With Zillion Coin, it's every minute. So every minute, a new block is uh, created. And in that block are kept all the transactions. So it is similar to a, a page in a ledger. So you write in your page if the page is full, or in this case, the 10 minutes are up, a new block is created. And the previous block or the next block are linked. So each block is linked to the previous one. And a cryptographic hash is carried over, and we talk about what that means, and that is the security. It's an ingenious system. It is very, very cleverly created because in the past, the problem, there were current digital currencies before Bitcoin, but the problem was double spending. So if you have spent a digital coin, what would prevent you from spending it again? So that is what Bitcoin solved, and that is why it's such an amazing development in this world of money and financial transactions that it is just overtaking the world and there is no escape. It will be uh, legitimate, it will be legitimized. There will be banks offering it, there will be ETFs offering it on Wall Street pretty soon. So that is why we think it is very important. We come back to a blockchain in detail in our first blockchain course, which will be released very soon. And we'll mention it in this show when it is released. So you can take a closer look. So next we will talk about our series one course number two. So these are 30 minute courses that we create as the under the name Explain Today. So Explain Today is a series of very simple explanations. It has short videos, it has courses, it has workshops that teach you in 30 minutes one of the concepts that are very important to understand, whether it's in AI or whether it's in blockchain technologies. And I use blockchain technologies and digital currencies because that's what they are. So we name things by what they are technically and how you can use them in your company. So I'm mentioning this here so you know it exists. And if you want, you can go ahead and take that course for 30 minutes, AI prompting for beginners. So we talked about getting results from an AI model, whether it's an LLM, like a large language model, like ChatGPT, or whether it's an image generating model, like Midjourney or DALI is the one that we will use, which is also part of OpenAI's developments. And they generate images. So even with the uh, audio, even with video, you can, it's text prompt to a generative output. So these are the things that we were, will cover. So in this course, we will have a course one, series one, course number two. What is a prompt? The importance of prompting, optimizing prompts, and then business considerations and then best practices. Because if you ask a generic question to an AI model, you will get a generic answer back. And, of course, the idea is that you have some information that you can use in your business. So asking generic questions to an AI model will not yield very useful information. So that's why the art or the science of prompting, because it is a complete career path for people if they want, is worthwhile uh, taking a closer look at. So that is what that course is all about. So next we will give you a little work desk, GPT work desk tip. So here you are, we explained in multiple places what GPT work desk is. It is our own development freely available for members with your membership. And it is a multi GPT work desk where you organize all your prompts, your files, your input, your output. And we will quickly also give you a little tip here when we open 
the work desk. So here, this is the enterprise version. So we have light version, prof, professional and enterprise. So here, if you want to create a new work desk, so you always see here work desk main, everybody has work desk main, everybody has work group main, and everybody has user main. So these are the default settings, but you also can create a new work desk that says here, let's say I make it demo 001. And let's keep it work group main and user main. And then we create here a new work desk. You saw that my clipboard and my prompts are cleared out. And we have a new work desk demo icon here in work desks. And now I can switch back and forth. So here you see on top which work desk that you are in. And then here you can switch back and forth. So you can see here if I go, come back here, then my, my credentials come back. So what that can do is it helps you organize much easier all your files and all your projects so they don't interfere with one another. That was our quick GPT work desk tip. So what is next here that we will cover state of the Bitcoin. So as we said uh, yesterday, we will cover just mention that it exists, just mention how you can get interested in it. We will not tell you how to trade it or what to do with it. So let me get here to the um, coinmarketcap.com because that is what we used to take a look at what the crypto market is doing and we went over this so we're not going to re visit everything but here you can see <clears throat> all the coins and their market notations it's like wall street for digital currencies and the fear and greed index is still at 72 which is pretty high which means people are buying more than they are selling and at this point, Bitcoin is at $34,580. That's about $900 less than yesterday. So what you can see here is it is highly volatile. And at this point, it's not that practical for, you know, a cup buying and selling a cup of coffee, but it is possible. Because we talked about the Satoshis, which are dollar cents or Bitcoin cents, just like a dollar has cents, Bitcoin has also cents, but instead of 100 cents to a dollar, there are 100 million Satoshis to the Bitcoin. So I keep repeating it so we get all familiar with that. And then if we want to know the value of one dollar, how much, how many Satoshis do I need for one dollar? Then we simply go to sets for dollars.com. And this is a good website and we have a problem here. Okay, I know what it is. Never mind. Sets for dollars is where you can then see, I think it's around 2,800 Satoshis for a dollar. So if you want to be a Satoshi millionaire, you can buy 1 million Satoshis for about $400 and just let it sit there as a type of saving. So with the next bull run, when um, Bitcoin is expected to make a new all-time high and the previous all-time high was over $68,000 or $64,000. So that will, you know, is anticipated to double in price, but it might happen, it might not happen, anything can happen. It's a financial market. And then the last topic of today, we talked a little bit about blockchains in, in the beginning of this episode and then we talked about proof of work and proof of stake so what is proof of work proof of work is a protocol that is used to maintain blockchains and that secures the blockchain when the activity of mining for coins which is generating new coins by generating new blocks and whoever generates a new block gets the coin the block reward that's kind of how it works and to make all that work on a technical level, there is something established that is called proof of work, where the miner who is securing the block by executing um, cryptographical calculations, which is very computer intense, so you use a lot of power and that's where your cost is. And against that cost, the offset is if you get the block reward, you get a certain amount of coins that changes 
every four years. It's called the halving, H-A-L-V-I-N-G, halving, which is coming up and which coincides with a lot of price movements. And we will explain more of that in our course on blockchain for beginners. And at this point, all we wanted to do is get make you familiar with the fact that there is such a thing as a blockchain and there is such a thing as proof of work that secures the blockchain. That's it for today. I hope to see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching.